love learning. In fact, if you're on a Zoom call with me, you will see one of my prized possessions, a 600 pound carved wooden bookshelf. It looks like a background picture, but it's really what's behind my desk. I was always proud of my ability to read and absorb lots of information until I realized how recklessly I was learning. You and I have 24 hours every day. That means 1,440 minutes of time to spend on all the things that need to get done. Choosing who to pay attention to and what to learn is a significant decision because of the precious few moments we have. Choose wisely. Here are three things you need to know to make the best possible choices. First is the concept of compounded learning. No matter where you are at in life, learning is a required discipline for advancement. Graduating from high school or college should never mean the end of learning. The last chapter in John Cotter's Leading Change had a profound impact on my perspective of professional development. Cotter talks about two specific cases in which unimpressive people transformed themselves into incredible leaders. The secret to their success was compounded growth. Just like money in the bank grows through compounded interest, an investment in learning pays dividends over time that produces leaders. This matters because an investment in your learning is an investment in your future. Make wise choices with your time to invest in the topics and content that will help you accomplish your future goals. Don't be afraid to spend money. At Brighton Leadership, we consistently invest 10% of our earnings into our future growth. The second thing you need to know to make the best learning choice is use the power of curiosity. How are you intentionally growing, improving, and learning? One of the best ways to learn is to remain curious. A curious mind dives beneath the surface of common acceptance to unravel the details driving the process. Why not ask why? Get curious about how things can change, improve, or be done differently. Here are some tips on using curiosity to accelerate your learning. First, suspend judgment. When you keep an open mind, you shut down the filters that subtly distort the reality of what you are experiencing. This will help you see things with new perspective and fresh insights. Adam Grant talks about this in his book, Think Again. He recommends maintaining an open mind, willing to challenge assumptions and change your position. Second, ask questions. What, why, when, who, where, and how? Give curious leaders the ability to dig deeper beneath the surface of what's going on around them. I love questions so much that I collect them. Questions open your mind to possibilities. When you ask a question, your mind can't help but respond to it. So improve the quality of your questions to help you improve your learning. The final tip to use curiosity to accelerate your learning is expand your horizons. Read a book in a different genre. Participate in an event that you've never been to or vacation somewhere new. Don't spend all your time in just one world. Take a look at other worlds. It will introduce you to the possibilities and excitement of the other worlds, which may spark your interest to explore them further. The benefits of being curious are multifold. You will learn more, you will be a more effective observer, which translates into more effective leadership. You will open up new worlds of possibilities. Being curious ensures that your mind remains active rather than on passive autopilot. Be a leader and learn through curiosity. The final thing you need to know to make the best learning choices is to be conscious. For many years, I engaged in random acts of learning. I would pick up a book, then another, then take a class, watch a webinar, listen to a podcast, and so on. There was no rhyme or reason to my learning. If you don't have an intentional reading strategy, I highly recommend Steve Levine's book, The Little Guide to Your Well-Read Life. He challenged me to consider that no one can be well-read in all or even most things. The secret is to take control of your reading life. Here are some suggestions to create your conscious learning strategy. First, start with a list of topics. What are your interests and passions? Why learn in a myopically specific area? Broaden your horizons by identifying your full range of interests and then broaden your learning list. Identify the best authors, teachers, podcast hosts, and the most renowned books in your areas of interest. Why settle for less than the best? Collect titles of books or other learning channels that you add to your candidate list. 
These are the candidates for your attention, not candidates of obligation. If someone makes a recommendation, ask them why they like the book so much. Make sure it fits your areas of interest. Then focus your time and attention on the books or learning channels from your candidate list rather than be random. Plan your learning, then learn according to your plan. Enjoy. Do not finish a book that you are not enjoying. Of course, unless it's a class assignment. There's too many books in this world to read. Don't spend time slogging through a book that brings you no pleasure or benefit. The same applies to a podcast, a course, or any other method you are using to increase your learning. Start today to increase your conscious learning list that suits your unique interest. Take control of your learning life and make a plan to compound your learning, be curious, and be conscious. If this resonates with you, subscribe below to our YouTube channel and join our weekly subscriber email list to receive Tuesday's tremendous tips, bite-sized insight on all things life and leadership. Bright on with Brighton Leadership.